Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with MedNuggets. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to differentiate exogenous hypoglycemia from endogenous hypoglycemia. So let's move on to the question now. All right. What's the diagnosis? A 55-year-old woman is brought to the ED because of an episode of left arm weakness and lightheadedness that lasted for 30 minutes. Her symptoms were preceded by tremors, palpitations and diaphoresis. During the past four months, she has had increased appetite and has gained 5.7 kilograms. She has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, anxiety disorder and GERD. She works as a nurse and has been under more stress than usual. Her current medications include enalapril, fluoxetine, atovastatin, and omeprazole. She is 168 cm tall and weighs 100 kg, BMI 36. Her temperature is 37, pulse 77, BP 132 by 80. Cardiopulmonary examination shows no abnormalities. The abdomen is soft and tender. Fasting serum studies show sodium 140, that is normal. Potassium 3.5, that is normal. Creatinine 0 0.8, normal. Glucose 37, that is low, very low. Insulin 280, that is high. TSH is normal. And C-peptide is high. Urine screening for sulfonylureas is negative. What is the diagnosis? When you read this question, you can understand that this question belongs to endocrinology. When it comes to endocrinology questions, you need to always look at the lab values because they are always going to indicate something. They are always going to help you to come to the answer. right? So over here, you can see that this patient's glucose level is low. Insulin levels are high. So this patient is having hypoglycemia. All his symptoms, his left arm weakness, lightheadedness, palpitations, diaphoresis, and everything is because of hypoglycemia. It's because of an hypoglycemia episode. With that said, now let's have a look at the answer options. Option A is PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Can this be PCOS? No, because PCOS patients have hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia, right? PCOS patients have insulin resistance, which means these patients have high levels of insulin in their body, but this insulin is not able to do its job. The body is resistant to this insulin. As a result of that, it won't be able to do its job. It won't be able to reduce the glucose level, the glucose level in the patient's blood. Right, So PCOS patients have hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia. So PCOS is wrong. Then comes insulinoma and exogenous hypoglycemia. So what is an insulinoma? An insulinoma is a tumor of the pancreas that produces insulin. Right, This pancreatic tumor produces a lot of insulin. What is exogenous hypoglycemia? It happens when you take insulin from outside. And this is very common among healthcare workers. They tend to abuse insulin. They tend to um, take insulin from outside. Right? So what is the difference between insulin that is produced in our body and the insulin that we take from outside? Now that brings us to C-peptide. C-peptide is a subunit that is present in insulin produced in our body, it's not, produced in, it's not produced in insulin that we take from outside. So this helps us to differentiate between exogenous insulin, the insulin we take from outside, and the insulin that is present in our body, endogenous insulin. When it comes to an insulinoma, your body is producing, your pancreas, your body is producing a lot of insulin. But when it comes to exogenous hypoglycemia, like for example, if you take uh, insulin from outside. If you take insulin from an insulin pen, that insulin won't contain this C-peptide subunit. Right? So exogenous hypoglycemia, uh, I'm going to write it down here, insulinoma, there's endogenous, endogenous insulin contains C 
peptide, whereas exogenous insulin doesn't, right? Now, when it comes to exogenous hypoglycemia, uh, this can happen when you take insulin from outside, right? Like when you inject insulin from an insulin pen. Or else it can happen when you take a lot of sulfonylureas, when you abuse insulin in the form of insulin pens, or else when you take drugs like sulfonylurea. Now, the way sulfonylurea works in our body is when you ingest uh, sulfonylurea, it goes to the body and it tells the pancreas, hey, the body's glucose level is high. Can you please produce some insulin for me and bring down the body's uh, blood glucose levels back to normal? Right? That's how sulfonylurea works. So it basically tells your pancreas to produce insulin. So that is endogenous insulin, isn't it? It's not exogenous insulin. It's not like we. It's not like the insulin that we take from a pen. Sulfonylurea works by going into your body and telling the pancreas, "Hey, produce some insulin for me." So that's going to be endogenous ins insulin, which is going to have that C peptide subunit, right? But the question clearly says now. This brings us to um, the question. So, is this an insulinoma or else is this exogenous hypoglycemia caused by sulfonylurea? But the question is clearly telling you urine screening for sulfonylurea is negative, right? So, can this be exogenous hypoglycemia? No. Can this be an insulinoma? Yes, this could be an ins. This could be an insulinoma because the patient's C peptide level is high, insulin level is high, and glucose level is. Low. This looks like an endogenous hypoglycemia situation, right? So, keeping that answer at the back of our um, mind, let's move to the other option, option D, binge eating disorder. If you eat too much, obviously, it's going to increase your body's glucose levels, right? It's not going to cause a hypoglycemia, it's going to cause a hyperglycemia, right? Then Cushing's syndrome, again, just like in PCOS, in Cushing's syndrome also, you have insulin resistance. So, therefore, there's going to be hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia. Also, these patients are these patients are going to have other signs and symptoms like abdominal strife, uh, a buffalo hump, right? Um, and osteoporosis, menstrual irregularities, things like that. The question will describe um, those kind of symptoms. But over here, the patient is not having any of those symptoms. This, th these symptoms in this question are clearly due to hypoglycemia. They are describing a hypoglycemic episode, several episodes of hypoglycemia due to an insulinoma. So the answer to this question is option D, insulinoma. Right. So that brings us to the end of the question. Hope you understood um, what I explained today. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.